Greetings, citizens, and welcome back. I am Trip Rodriguez, and this is part two of my dual joystick guide for Star Citizen. This guide assumes that you are using two Thrustmaster T16,000Ms. This setup will cost you under $100 if you're in the U.S. generally, including shipping. Uh, these sticks generally go for $50 or, yes, or less U.S. They are as accurate as the most expensive and best joysticks on the market because they use the same Hall Effect sensor as Thrustmaster's very high-end Thrustmaster Warthog. The Hall Effect sensor technology in here will not wear out and is a whole lot more accurate. These sticks also have very decent travel. But make no mistake, the Thrustmaster T-Flight stick and HOTAS are typical of inexpensive joysticks and their performance is very much unsatisfactory. These are the only joysticks you're going to find for less than about 125 that are going to be uh, satisfactorily accurate for any kind of competitive gameplay. Also, they are ambidextrous, meaning you can use left, one for the left hand and one for the right hand, which makes them ideal for our purposes. All right, guys, now, because of a couple of bugs in Star Citizen, uh, basically pertaining to the dead zone. Right now there's an issue in Star Citizen where if you set a dead zone for one joystick then it is going to affect the dead zone functionality on both joysticks and that's really bad because we want a really big dead zone on the left hand stick and we want zero dead zone on the right hand stick. Now you can go ahead and make changes to the curves in game uh, to basically put in a, a dead zone into the curve but that functionality is very clunky and difficult to use. There are some bugs that create some problems. If you try to edit it, uh, to tune it a bit after the initial edit, it doesn't work, it doesn't save, and then you have to default it back out and then start over again each time that you want to make a little change. There's a much, much easier solution that comes with some other benefits as well, and that is using Thrustmaster's target software. It is the uh, very advanced programming software that Thrustmaster provides for the Warthog and T16000M joysticks as well as the Cougar multifunction panels. There is a catch. Thrustmaster Target is only able to operate one T16000M. They did not include functionality to be able to manage two of the same joystick. Uh, so we're going to be using Target to control only the left hand joystick. The reason we're going to use this instead is it's a hell of a lot easier and it'll be much, much easier for you to make some adjustments if you decide you need a little bit more or a little bit less dead zone. And it is also going to allow us to introduce a shift button, meaning that you will program one button on one of your joysticks so that when you help hold that button down, it changes the functions of all of the other buttons so that you can get a bunch more of uh, different functions out of the hands-on controls. Uh, than you could if you only assigned one action to each button for a total of only 16 different functions. We can add to that considerably this way. So first thing we're going to do is uh, verify which of your T16000M's Thrustmaster Target is working with. So go ahead and uh, install Thrustmaster Target from the Thrustmaster website. Uh, once you have that up and running, you're going to go ahead and launch into the application, and you should see what we're looking at here on the screen. Uh, it will uh, look different, you know, what's in the window here, depending on what's connected to your computer. It'll probably just be your one T16000M displaying in there. But what you're going to do is hit New Configuration. You can put in a name for your own reference. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and do that and hit OK. And then you're going to select your Thrustmaster T16000M joystick as what you are uh, building a profile for. I don't have one connected, so it's yellow, uh, but it still lets me go in and make a profile. Hit next. And for now, we're going to just skip over uh, doing any of the settings because all we want to do right now is just find out which of the uh, two joysticks is being operated by target. So go ahead and hit next again and finish. Say yes. And you're going to select that profile that you just created. Uh, I'll actually select my own profile that works here just to demonstrate this, but you're going to select the one that you just made and hit the run button. Now you must always launch this before you launch Star Citizen. Your joysticks will not work properly. Keep that in mind. You must always remember to launch your profile and target before you fire up Star Citizen. We're going to go ahead and hit run. And then if you hit device analyzer here down at the bottom, it'll pop up this window. And what I want you to do is just move 
uh, first one and then the other of your T16000M joysticks around and see how those sliders move around. Only one of them should do that. And whichever one moves those sliders around when you move it, that is now your left hand joystick. We need to use the target functionality uh, for the left hand. That is a necessity right now because of the dead zone bug in the Star Citizen settings. So the target controlled stick must be your left stick. And getting target to switch which stick it is operating is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, I have not been able to find any way to do it reliably. The ways that should theoretically work don't seem to, at least not reliably. So this is the best way to do it. Whichever stick target just naturally selected, it's probably the joystick that's on uh, joystick ID 1 according to Windows, uh, is now your left hand joystick. So put that one on the left side and put the other one on the right hand side. Switch your thumb rests over if you need to or if you haven't done that already at all yet. And uh, then you're ready to move on to the next step. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at Thrustmaster Target and fire up the Thrustmaster Target GUI. So we're going to go ahead and advance to the next page. Uh, this is the big key here. This is where we're able to create the dead zones that we need for the left hand stick. Now the reason we need dead zones for the left hand stick is because the vast majority of people are not coordinated enough to be able to push that stick all the way forward, for example, and not accidentally also push it off to the left in particular. Forward and left is the biggest problem. We want you to put a really big dead zone on the x-axis on the left-hand stick and a significant dead zone on the y-axis on the left-hand stick. Now, using dead zones on your right-hand stick is a terrible idea. You don't want any dead zone whatsoever. Any dead zone that you put on there is going to decrease your accuracy anytime that you're operating near the middle of the stick's travel or crossing the stick's center. Um, but for the left hand, we want dead zones. So go ahead here, you see Joy X. That's going to be your X axis on that joystick for your left and right strafe. And with this particular one, you're going to want to set it, depending on uh, some experimenting that you can do, and you can just always, even in game, you can tab out, stop your profile, and come in here and make an edit start the profile back up, tab back into the game, and continue testing. So you want to uh, continue increasing this until you do not accidentally go sideways at all, which you'll be able to see by your TVI indicator moving off to one side or the other. Um, and you want this to be tested while you are vigorously flying around and changing your left hand stick position. Uh, if you are a racer, you will very likely want to set a much larger dead zone it's going to mean a little bit less fine control of your left and right strafe uh, for when you want to move slowly on those axes, etc. But we'll, uh, any sliding to the side and racing is going to get you killed and really, uh, even if you don't hit anything, it's going to really slow down your times. I'm advising that you go anywhere between about 35 and 55% here on your uh, center dead zone for the x-axis. Uh, and if you're a racer, you may even want to go more like 50% to 75% just to make sure that you're not accidentally getting any of that left-right straight. So once you have that set, we're just going to go with 50 here. You can go ahead and move over to your Y-axis. And your Y-axis, this is your forward and back strafe control. Um, so if you just want to strafe straight off to the side, you don't want to be accidentally going forward or back. So I suggest setting a little bit of a dead zone there. Probably between 10 and 20 will be adequate for this, but you can experiment. All right, so once you get those all set up, you can hit Next down here at the bottom corner. Uh, and now we're going to set up that Alt function. So the, the Shift key in order to give you more joystick functions with your hands on buttons. So you're going to do that. Uh, by clicking on the button that we want to program. Now, because we're using target for the left-hand joystick so that we can use the dead zone functionality, your shift button is going to have to be on the left hand. So Star Citizen will recognize left control, left alt, left shift, right shift, right alt, right control uh, as modifier keys. You could actually set up multiple different ones to get even more functions. You could have three functions per button on many of the buttons if you feel that you need more. I think that just one shift key is going to do us, especially if you're able to use voice attack. Um, but for the most part, only the things that you need to use during combat are critical to have on those hands-on controls. We'll get into that in more detail in the next segment, which will be button bindings. All right, so what we're going to do 
uh, is this button here, I believe, is what I decided we were going to be using for the shift button. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And once we selected that, TS2, we just put in a name for our own reference. And we're going to do uh, shift button. That's just for our own reference. Click on the virtual game keyboard and mouse and click on left shift, left control, or left alt. I usually go with alt. You'll see it light up in yellow there, and it also say alt held down here in the red. Uh, you'll see the left alt down here. Save the key command. Now this is very important. We need to set this to hold. Unfortunately, hold should be the default. That just means that as long as you hold that button down, the computer sees it as held down. The default mode, pulse, if you push that button down and hold it, it'll be like you tapped it real quick and let go. Uh, so for most of the things that you're going to program in Target, you want to use hold. So set hold uh, and add event, and you are all done. Now when you do your bindings in-game, if you hold that button down and click any other button, that will be a different function that you're assigning to that button than if you just clicked it by itself. All right. So you can go ahead once you have that done and hit finish. Keep in mind, you can always use Target for other advanced functionality as well, but Star Citizen's joystick support's pretty good, so it's generally not necessary. All right, and uh, the next thing to do is going to be go into game and start setting up our bindings. So we will do that in the next segment. Thank you guys for watching. This is a Trip Rodriguez from twitch.tv slash Trip Rodriguez, and I'll see you guys in the next video.